Welcome to How I See It with me, Mark Pratt, and Justin Sternberg. This is a podcast that works to counter cultural polarization through thoughtful conversations. It's interesting to um, recognize that this, what we offer is just a snippet. Yeah. But yeah, as we have these conversations, it's like my mind continues to ruminate Yeah. in some ways and say, okay, where does that come from? How come this happens? Or why do I see it this way? Or, oh wow, we really didn't even get into the, you know, the neural pathways that are created. You know, those kind of things. And you recognize how complex certain words are. Mm. Like yeah. which word? Well, you think of humor and it's like, okay, it's just mm. being able to tell a joke. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? But then yeah. as you talk about it for 45 minutes, you recognize how it's developed over time. You you recognize mm. how you learn it out of, in age-appropriate manners. You know, and it, and I and it, the other part and maybe you know part of where I'm is is that is the word power mm-hmm. it's like i not even necessarily uh, feeling that we can uh, it, it's so complex you feel inadequate mm-hmm. to basically take one word and describe it in such a way that it, it that covers all the nuances. Right. Especially in 40, 45 minutes. Yes. So we just scratched the surface. So. That's exactly it. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I think part of that mm-hmm. is the ability to be able to say, okay, yeah, well, at least we scratched the surface and other people who might hear, who might, <laughs> might continue to listen... Um, can take that and say, okay, huh, I hadn't thought about it like that. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's what this is between you and Mm -hmm. I, you know. Mm -hmm. Because like even even in that ability to say, you know, in that, the humor podcast, sarcasm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We didn't have necessarily the same definition for it. Perspective on what that was, right? Yeah. Yeah. So to be able to have that conversation that says, okay, this is how I see sarcasm. Yeah, yeah. yeah sarcasm. <laughs> yeah. This is how I yeah. see power. Yeah. This is how I see God. This is mm-hmm. how I see, you know, family, mm-hmm. wife. Yeah, and, and, you know, talking again, back to sarcasm, to get to a closer version of the truth, right? Like in that conversation, it's like there's nuance to sarcasm and recognizing that sometimes when I use the word sarcastic or sarcasm, Mm -hmm. some people will immediately hear that to my kids. I say, oh, great job. Way to go. You know, and it's like, no, that's I would never condone that. It's certainly not. Yeah. (laughs) Humor to me. Right. You know, and uh, yeah, but just that nuance and understanding that. Every every word is loaded, and you know, for yes. every person. And sometimes we get so offended both ways, right? Sure. Sometimes we're offended at their use of a certain word, and like obviously they're this then, mm-hmm. right? Oh, sure. And it's because our perspective of sarcasm is is that way one yeah. way, and and then sometimes we can get offended, like how dare you say I'm like that to my kids i would never do that you just said you do that right like yeah. and this this give and take uh where the truth is somewhere in the middle right like yeah and i and i guess and, I, and it's i'm not trying to make it relative but i think you know that's that's where unearthing you know mining yeah. and being able to mm-hmm. wrestle with you know okay where does this come from And is it true? Mm -hmm. Is it, you know, is this a bent? Mm -hmm. You know, is it a a generational thing that I've just learned as true? And yet I need a, I need a pattern to help me understand what straight really is. 
Yeah. Versus being bent. Yeah. In a certain fashion. I like that one. Bent. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think that I think a lot of the the words we use bring a personal bent to them mm-hmm. that we don't even always. Mm-hmm. It's 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 part of that. Um, well, mm-hmm. you know, as we as we develop our vocabulary, you know, I look I look at things, you know, almost like they're they're the schemas, if you will, the little pictures that we have that represent all of those words in our mind. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like you know, it's in some ways I think this is about rewriting, mm-hmm. or you know, redrafting some of those pictures, those mm-hmm. schemas that we have that say, mm-hmm. okay, this is what power looks like. This is what, and I and I think that's what, that's what makes even that word, you know, if we, if if you will, power. It's like, it's going to depend on what my experience has been with power. You follow me? It's mm-hmm. like, is it is it a point where I've grown up where might makes right? Because that's a bent. Hmm. Yeah. Or is it, or is it a, a matter of where, where I've come out of an abusive home or situation and I will never have power? Or I can never or attain. power represents danger. Yes. Right. Yes. But yet mm-hmm. even in hurt people hurt people, it's something that I attain I desire to attain. I mm-hmm. want to get me yeah, some of that yeah. someday. When I grow up, nobody's ever gonna do that to me. Mm-hmm. And therefore I just bring this this bent, you know into that view of what power is. Mm. And I think that's what makes it, you know, complicated. Mm. Yeah, because if you think about it in terms of it being danger, right? Like as a young person dealing with abuse in one way or another, power represents danger. And like you Mm. said, when I get old, I want to be the danger. Yeah. Right? I don't want to ever experience that feeling again. I want to be on top yeah i want to be the danger because in that spectrum yeah that's the safe side sure yes i view that as the safe side and to allow people to hurt me and not not in an abusive sense but in the process in the aspect of being wronged I think that's the danger there is because I can never allow myself to be wronged mm. when I have that viewpoint. Mm-hmm. Be- because it represents getting it, back to that other yes, side. Yes, yeah. it represents mm. that that part of my life when I was powerless. Yep. Now I'm perceiving that I have something yeah. In this form of power. So anything that represents that prior powerlessness becomes very confusing. And yeah. it, and it's and it's almost scary. react is scary. Yeah. Reactive is the word yeah. I was going to use. Yeah. And yeah. I and I think, you know, for me even the how our culture has defined words, you know, what is what is what does power look like? I think, you know, we can look at it from a, you know, uh, political, we can look at it from an ethnic, we can look at it from a gender, you know, perspective and say, you know, well, that's not right. Or, you know, I need some of that. And I, I think the, the attainment of it is empty. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, tipping the scales still means the scales are off balance, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm processing what you said in that tipping mm-hmm. the scales. And yeah, I'm not to say that's not to say that the scales are always balanced either. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, yeah, they probably need to be tipped. But yet, tipping for the sake of tipping, yeah, 
versus truth and being able to define, you know, things, words and say, okay, what does that mean to you? What is that? And I, and I think even there again with the, the word power versus the word powerless, if you will, two sides of a scale, Mm -hmm. you know, on one end of the continuum, I'm, I'm the king. Yeah. Authoritative end of the scale. And then on the passive or powerless end of the scale, it's like that can be a, a negative thing. Yeah, I'm in the dungeon of the, the castle. Yes. <laughs> the other side of that equation, yeah. Yes. When reality is cl- a closer is closer to us being both. Yes. Right? And I think about Hmm. Victor Frankel, who was a yeah. psychiatrist who... He came to mind earlier as well. Did he? Yeah. 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 He got put in a, a you know, prison camp, Nazi prison camp. Yeah. Endured insane you know, d- difficulties, right? And you know, after he wrote some books and wrote some stuff, but one of the things he, he basically said is that he has the power mm-hmm. to decide his response to yep. a situation, right? Sure. And so in between stimulus and response, we have the power to choose what our response is. In other words, input doesn't have to equal output. Sure. I can step in the middle there and choose. And so in his context, it was, I can let them steal my freedom. Sure. I can let them steal my power. I can let them have what they believe they're taking from me. Yeah. Or I don't have to. You may have me locked in a cage, but I still have my freedom. Yes. I can think what I want. I can, you yeah. know, within the confines of what this cage, I can do what I want. Like, yeah. you can't change me from the inside out. You don't have that power. Exactly. You know? And I think, yeah. So I that, think about that person, that individual is never powerless at that point. Right. That's the that's the right. beauty of it. That's the beauty of the 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 dichotomy, right? They're, yeah. They're both true. You will mm. always have that power. Uh you, in an abusive relationship, you'll always have the power to say, "No. Mm. I won't endure this." And and you know, take your steps towards the door or whatever. Now, I, I, of course, I don't want to simplify this too much. Nope, I hear you. I understand I'm, that. Yeah. You're sensitive to those who are right. in abusive situations. Right. I understand yeah. it's not always that simple. But I just want to say, like, we, we always have power. We don't have to give it away. Sure. And then on the flip side, we're always powerless. Hmm. We can walk out the door and a tree could fall on us, right? Or I could get okay. in the car and, like, I talked about my friend earlier, get in a car and get in a car accident, get hmm. out of my car after the accident, get hit by another car. And, did I plan that that is it that, mm. is that is that within my power to control of course not or your power to avoid right yeah no i'm completely powerless to mm. that and in any given point i may feel a relationship is at a certain state where another person doesn't and mm. i'm powerless to control other people's thoughts sure other people's behaviors other people's interactions mm. with me but i'm fully powerful in how i respond back to them or I'm not because I gave it up, right? And that's where reactivity comes into play. Versus, mm. But just the reality is so nuanced and it's a dichotomy that we're always powerful and we're always powerless. Mm. And understanding that balance is so important, mm. right? Yeah, and, it, and it, <laughs> I think for me personally, you know, that is some, that's a view that has been learned over time as mm. well. Because I don't think yeah. in who I was as a young teenager, young man, it's like I was desiring, I think I was desiring that power. You know, it's like no, nobody ever, you know, grows up desiring to be, you know, the, the abused person. Right. <laughs> you know, right. we want to be black belts. We want to be, you know football players or, you know, and and granted, I'm saying this as a male, you know, it's Mm -hmm. like, you know, but even, even females, even, you know, other individuals, I don't think anybody desires to lose what power they have. But yeah, I'm also recognizing that 
as I attain, you know, more abilities, I'll say, you know, there is more responsibility that goes along with that. So as I'm offered opportunity or power, however mm -hmm. you want to describe it, you know, I think there's a responsibility that goes along with that. Mm. And it's something that I can share. It's something that I can give away, you know, in the in sense that says it's okay. You know, follow me in 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 the sense that I don't have all the answers and I am I too am powerless in these situations. And I think, you know, that is a learning that comes with time is to be able to recognize that, yes, I am powerless. I can't, short of my ability to, my heart to beat, my lungs to breathe, I can't generate any more air, you know, than I currently can. You know, that yeah. kind of thing. I don't And you're dependent on your lungs doing what they do. Exactly. <laughs> you're not I'm, deciding. Exactly. Right. And that, you know, and there are many things like that that happen Yeah. that I am powerless over, yeah. fortunately, I'd say, yes. by God's grace. Yes. Hmm. So, yeah. And that's where, I mean, <laughs> that's where we miss um, how much power is God, right? Like, sure. And... Again, I'm not waking up every morning saying, "Okay, lungs, remember you got to do this." And, yeah. Uh, you know, knees, make sure you you move this way, not that way. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Like, all these things, and I'm not, you know, reminding you know my my legs how to locomote, right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> is that a word? Yes, it's, I'm good with it. It I'm is good now. It. it is now. Webster. <laughs> uh, right. Like I'm not making these conscious decisions, and mm. you know, also like. I'm not telling the boards above me to not cave and fall in on me. I'm mm. not telling, you know, the meteors to stop hitting the earth, you know, or mm. avoid us, right? Somebody is. Mm. And that's where we m miss it. Like, believers, atheists alike, mm. something's keeping it all together. The Bible says, in him, we we live and move and have our being, right? Like, sure. Uh, there's there's a power that we have access to that's mm. beyond ourselves, right? Yeah. And I think we can talk about, you know, our our personal power all day long, but if we miss that, mm. you know, then we're missing the most important capability that we have sure. on this earth, which is to tap into the supernatural mm. power, right? Sure. So I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask Justin. How much are you thinking about CR at this moment while we're having this conversation? It's yeah. <laughs> a good question. Uh, so the joke. It well. So the second lesson of celebrate mm. recovery. The first lesson is denial, because mm. until you get a denial, there's no moving forward. But the second lesson is powerless. Stop. Stop with denial for yeah. just a moment, though. Isn't that to a, a great degree? what we were talking about with that abuse of power mm. or you know what I mean that yeah that I that I can on my own yes I have this power I can do it yes I can quit anytime Mark that's right you <laughs> yeah. just don't understand yeah. I can quit anytime yeah. I decide to I yeah. want to yep although I've had this same pattern in my life for 60 years yeah but I can decide anytime I want to <laughs> That in and yeah. of itself would be denial. Denial, yep. Not I mean, a not a river in Egypt, as they say. Yeah. But yeah. Well, and denial comes in so many flavors. In like we like we were just talking about power being a dichotomy. Yeah. You can have denial that you're powerless, but you can also have denial that you have power. You sure. have responsibility. You mm -hmm. should choose a different response, right? Like, mm. and so a lot of times denial is coming in the form of like, I can't do anything about it. I'm powerless over this situation. Mm. It's like, well, you could put your shoes on and walk out the door mm -hmm. or you could just not drive into that parking lot. Mm. Right. Sure. Or you could call that person who said, call me anytime you need. Cause I know, you know, whatever, I know you need some support. You mm -hmm. could pick up the phone and call that person. Yeah. You know, 
Yeah. Um, you could put um, meetings in place in your life where every Tuesday morning or mm-hmm. Wednesday morning, in our case, I'm at this place at this time meeting with this person because yep. I know it's going to uh, be an accountability situation for me. Sure. You know, and so denial comes in both forms of I I have all the power. I don't need anyone's help and yeah. I don't have any power and I can't control anything. I have, you know, yeah. denial covers all of that ground, you know. Yep. And I think that's where I'm is it's this ability to learn because I do mm-hmm. I think I think I think power is multifaceted because I may have power in this realm, but I may feel mm. powerless in this realm. Yeah. I may feel powerless <clears throat> over my finances <clears throat> depending on where I'm at, or I may feel I may be on that verge of, um, I'm trying to, uh, not sacrilegious, but where I think I know it all where religion is concerned. Mm. There's a word for that, but yeah, you know, in a, in a spiritual realm, you know, I got it all figured out, Mm -hmm. you know, there isn't a, you know, so Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the multifaceted part, you know, because some areas it it may be comfortable for me. Mm. Other areas aren't going to be comfortable for Mm -hmm. me to recognize that dichotomy between Mm -hmm. power and powerless. Mm -hmm. But yet back to Victor, our buddy Victor, you know, it's like, am I that far in either direction? And yes, I still have a choice to put my shoes on. I still have a choice to open up that book. You know, I still have an opportunity to learn and take baby steps in such a way that says, okay, this isn't how it has to be. This is where, this is who I am, mm-hmm. but that's not who I have to be. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest, I didn't hear the last couple sentences because I'm trying to figure out who our buddy Victor is. Victor Frankel. Victor oh. Frankel. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I, that was just, you know, we, I, I was, yes, he had come to mind as you he shared. He is my buddy. I'll give you that. Yeah. Is he still living? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think, I don't think he is. Yeah. Concentration camp. Yeah. He made it out of there. He but, did. He wrote yeah, some wonderful know. books. Yeah. He is a lot of reasons. Well, I just, I, you know, yeah. I forgot that detail. That that's is my okay. buddy. So. That's okay. Sorry, I lost you there. For you didn't that say <laughs> like I say. So, I did not. So I missed the connection. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I hear you either yet. But uh, well, I hear you. But that being said, back to we Sorry. were at the first denial. First area. Yeah, so, yeah. so going now. Sorry. Yeah. Now, now go forward. Yeah. Justin. Is so hard. once I mean that's the whole thing is like again if you can't. If you can't step away from yourself and look back and go, where am I missing it? Yeah. That that that's a recognition. That's that's getting through some denial. Mm-hmm. If you know you, you can't progress, but once you get past that, then the very next thing we we put in front of you is okay. Guess what, kid? You're powerless, yeah. <laughs> right? And it's so. I mean, I think it's counterintuitive to come to a recovery program and the second thing you hear about is how you're powerless because it's like. Well, what the flip? How am I supposed to get yeah. better? Like, this is how's this supposed to help me? Well, it's like, it's offensive. This, yes, it's, it's offensive, offensive, and it's also, de- depending on your paradigm of power, oh. scary. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is it I, talking about that person whose power mm. represented danger, and I finally got that power, and I'm the danger, and you're saying I don't have that, or I have to. Give it up, uh, you know. Uh, like, uh, yeah. I don't know if this thing's worth it, right? Like, yeah, I'm not sure I want to come back here. Right. I'm not sure I want to deal with that. Yeah, and so what we are, what we're always trying to encourage people to understand is, this is a step based program, mm. right? And we're not going to leave you here, mm. but it's important to start here. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's, it's important, important to recognize right. where I am powerless. It's important to recognize that you are powerless to, on your own, right? Yeah. To dig your way out of the mess you've gotten into. Yeah. And recognize that you need help. Yeah, it's it's almost, it's to that point of I need to be able to recognize there is another source of help power Mm -hmm. or there is the ability to have this power infused Mm. into Mm. me 
because I don't have the ability on my own to generate it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's yeah. And I think I think the you know, I think it's John fifteen where he talks about you know he, uh, we he is the vine and we are the branches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and how that his power is able to flow into us when we recognize we need it as a source. Mm-hmm. Because all we're doing is basically wilting on the vine by saying, I don't need, I don't need nurturing. Mm -hmm. I don't need, I don't need your power. Thank you. (laughs) I got this. And yet I'm wilting on the vine, Mm -hmm. having all of the resources available to me, all the power, if you will, available to me. I just have to be able to recognize that I'm powerless mm. to be able to do it on my own. And it's ironic when we when we have that thought or that, you know, or like when we're just disregarding his power, right? Mm. When, again, ironically, if we're like, I don't need that power, thank you. Okay, yeah. well, good luck keeping your heart beating. Yeah. Good luck keeping that wood above your your head from caving in while you sleep. Good luck keeping the meteors away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and yet, you know, it makes me think of that verse that the Bible says, God is not slow concerning his promise, mm. but he has... I gotta look it up, because I'm gonna but, butcher it. Um, but he's patient, right? Sure. And he's patient with... Go ahead. You, no, you finished it that one. Well, no, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying he's not in a hurry to change us. Right. He is able to, he's able to wait on. The power is always right there. Yeah. And it's and it's like plugging into the outlet in the wall. Yeah. It's always there. And I guess. I, m- the point I was trying to make is his power isn't removed from us because we don't believe it or else we would wilt. Sure. Right? And that's where I was thinking about the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. In other words, mm. he's not slow to respond to our, you know, uh, mm-hmm. our, I guess, pride, right? Um, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord uh, will come like a thief. Mm-hmm. As you look forward to the God, day of God and speed, it's coming. But but the whole thing there is like he's not slow in mm-hmm. responding to our arrogance. Yeah, he's patient, and it comes from a place of love, and it comes from a place of just wait, because yeah. you're gonna come back to this, and you're gonna remember. Remember when I said I don't need your power? Yeah, I now recognize how much I need it. You know, daily, daily, yes, yeah. and how much you've granted it to me to so many degrees that I couldn't even fathom before and I thought it was all just me being independent and powerful on my own but really you're the one again keeping my heart beating yeah keeping the cars from slamming into me on the the highway like I don't have control over all this you're the one who keeps my spouse loving me you know (laughs) like yeah because I know me and they shouldn't love me right yeah and, uh, yeah, so I just think, I don't know, that verse came to mind, but his patience, right? Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think that, that slow part in the process, he's not slow mm-hmm. in his process. It's our view mm-hmm. of him being slow mm-hmm. in the process. That's what makes it a step program. Yeah. I have to do my part on the individual steps, and yet... It, it becomes a process and in our in our momentary circumstance we want instantaneous change mm-hmm. so yes from a view of have, desiring instantaneous change just take it away you know I don't want to go through the work of having to deal with this his process is slow mm-hmm. yep but yet it's beneficial and he is patient and it's not about us being mm. able to, you know, have the power on our own. It's about us being able to recognize that the power is available to us. Mm. And his desire is to do it in us. Through us, like, like we talked about dynamic power. Mm-hmm. You know, our, our word, 
what was it, our word for dynamite, hmm. you know, that's the word that describes the Holy Spirit is that dynamo power, but yet we tend to think of it as dynamite. But no, you know, the word for power, you know, in that sense is 2,000 years old versus 200 years old. <laughs> Yeah. So the 200 is I have the ability to do what needs to be done in you, this dynamic power. It's not just a linear power that blows everything out of the way because <laughs> right. that's what we want. Right, right. Okay, God, slay my enemies. Right. But no, he works in my heart in a dynamic mm -hmm. way. He doesn't just blow things up. He he works mm -hmm. in and around and through our circumstances in a dynamic way mm -hmm. that no dynamite type power ever could. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the, mm -hmm. you know, when we understand dynamic power versus the dynamite power, you know, that's 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 a powerful thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> It's so good. Because he's working in and around and through my mm. circumstances mm. to, in this patient, loving, and kind way, mm. that's not just go before me and slay my enemies. It's like, okay, there's a process here. And I can trust you in the process and you working through me produces change. Mm -hmm. And I think mm. that's, yeah. Yeah, and if you're if you are able to reflect, right, and look at the landscape of your life and see how essentially he moved heaven and earth to get you to this mm. moment in time. Mm -hmm. Again, it takes it takes the ability to see mm -hmm. which he grants and I think perspective sure. for right? such a time as this. Right. But to be able to see how all those things lined up to put you, you know, like you said, for such a time as this, to put you here right now in this yeah. situation to do what you're doing. With these gifts. Right. Compare that power to be able to manipulate all those, if, if you believe mm. in God's sovereignty and how he folds all these pieces of your life together to produce this one result, this one day, right? Yeah. Compare that to dynamite power. Like, boom. Yep. You know, the face of the mountain's gone. And it's like, that was powerful, but there wasn't a control. There was, you know. Yeah. Where, the, like you said, that dynamic power that that he has naturally, you know, is immensely more powerful because it is, because it is perfectly controlled. Sure. Right? So as we, as we describe this, this dynamic power... Uh, Jess, I'm going to turn it towards you just a little bit. Can you remember, share, however you want, a, a time when that dynamic power was just so evident in mm. your personal life? Mm. I realize that's a big question. That I is just a big threw, question. I just threw it at you. <laughs> well, I mean, we... We briefly touched on some of the things when we talked about the Holy Spirit. Okay. Do you recall? So, you do your conversation with Megan and, and that kind of thing? Was that in that one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not necessarily Megan. It was just with certain people where... Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where the results in mm. even mid-conversation, it was clear. Like you said, there's mm. a dynamic power here that's coming from outside of myself. It is an infusing, to use the word you mentioned earlier. Yeah. The vine is clearly, you know, I'm clearly attached to the vine and it is flowing through me to the degree where I'm happy to not take credit, but yeah. also happy to be the branch that it's flowing through today, right? Like that yeah. balance of, um, so that's the first thing that comes to mind is just certain conversations or difficult mm. decisions that had to be made that were made made easy because of a dynamic power sure and were typically that same conversation that same decision that same situation would be immensely difficult yeah you know what i mean i do i know it's yeah. and I, it's funny that you, as you share i have a, a a memory comes to my mind it's like um Chris and I, my wife, we, we built a house in upstate New York prior to moving here. And I can remember uh, in, in the process of building that house, it was just, it was, it was a task. And it was, mm. but yet it was something we felt called to do. 
it was something that we, you know, we had just looked at houses and, you know, and everything was so expensive. And it's like, crying out loud, we can take these same resources and we can, we can make our own house with this same money or less money Mm -hmm. than it would cost to buy a house under this market. And so we endeavored and we had great family support in the whole process. But I just remember, you know, the work that I did in my, in, you know, just organizing, Yeah. you um, know, you know, just the, the, not, not in an arrogant sense, but, you know, taking the steps that I needed to take. And I can remember this one morning and it was just, it was just, I had prepared to get the shingles on the roof because we were, you know, we had a wedding coming up and we were going to be going away. And I just wanted to be able to get these shingles on the roof, get them down. So, you know, weather, you know, it's just, it's just, it's a, it's a hurdle, you know, when a house is under roof, Mm. you know, there's a, I can breathe. And I uh, remember I was prepped. I'd gotten there early and I had a boom truck you know, ready to be able to boom the shingles to the second story, you know, that morning at, you know, eight o'clock. So I was there, I was pumped, I was ready, you know, just waiting for that boom truck to show up. And it's like phone rings, you know, and flip phone back in those days, I open it up, it's like the company, nope, we're not going to be able to get you your shingles today. The boom truck's down. It's like, crap. I'm powerless. What am what yeah. I can't I can't get mad at them. <laughs> Things break, you know. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. and it's like and I hung up the phone and I mean I was I just felt defeated. Yeah. It's like all this preparation, all this time. And <laughs> yeah. Um I looked down the driveway just like 15 minutes later. And uh my friend, a friend of mine on that Friday morning. He, uh, he chose, he said, I'm not doing anything today. I'll come up and help Mark put his shingles on Mm. his roof. And not only did my friend come to help, but my friend owned an auto body shop and, uh, he had, he had a Mustang and he had a rollback and he said, uh, he came rumbling up the driveway and he said, and I told him my story and, uh, he says, well, you know, he says, I was thinking about bringing the Mustang this morning, but it must've been God that chose me that told me I needed to bring the roll back. He says, there's no reason we, we, we can't drive my truck down to that place, put, have them load your shingles mm-hmm. on. We'll put them all the way to the front and we can lift the roll back up. And we can get uh, the shingles off the front of the rollback, lift it up onto the porch roof of of house. And we were able to shingle that whole front porch, get shingles up on the main roof. And it was just, that was, that was a moment for me when I just understood, I mean, it was a reality for me that there was this power that was so much bigger than my circumstances. And it was in that moment that he desired to make that evident to me, Mm -hmm. you know, and I just, and I just, it's just one of those things in moments when I'm thinking I am powerless that I can be thankful for that because just because I am doesn't mean that God is powerless, Mm -hmm. you know, in that moment. And it's, and I think that's where scripture comes into play, you know, in our weakness, he is strong. And he's always strong. Yes. Yeah. And that, and it's that that's yeah. and, and so even as I apologize, I threw that question at you. That was deep, mm. but it was like, yeah, that that moment is one that still comes back to me every now and then when I'm thinking about it. It's like, okay, it's not me. The the boom trucks down. You know mm. what am what am what am I supposed to do? It's like, hold on. Just, just a second. Help is on the help way. Is, help is already, help has been released <laughs> already. Yeah, dispatched. <laughs> help has already been dispatched. And it's not something that I have to control. And it's not a reflection or there's nothing wrong with me. It's not a reflection of who I am when I don't have mm. the ability mm. 
there's nothing wrong with me. And if anything, it's a, it's a part of who I am and it allows God to be my father Mm -hmm. who basically says, okay, talk with me about that problem. Because, you know, I'm bigger than any of the problems that you have, but you have to do it differently. Mm. You can't just do the same thing over and over again, expecting Mm. a different result. You can't have, you can't take that same problem. What what were you thinking? I saw the, I saw Mm -hmm. the gears turn in there for a moment. Uh, Still. (laughs) Just as you, (laughs) they don't stop. Um, no, just as you were sharing that story, I was just trying to think about other times in my life where I felt that it's a profound sense of he's bigger and he's in control, mm. right? And mm. it's interesting, like, uh, my theo- theologically, I transitioned um, in my late teens, before, you know, a little bit before I got married, I guess maybe college years, from free will Mm. and my power to do and accomplish and be righteous and all that to a much stronger understanding of God's sovereignty. Sure. And at the time I was going to a a church, John Piper's church and John Piper is, you know, he's a Mm -hmm. modern day theologian who writes about God's sovereignty Mm. 24 seven, right? Like it's, it's his passion topic. And, um, and so I started to experience a whole nother side, you know, theology of like, oh, he can and will do whether I do or don't, <laughs> you know, mm, and yeah, whether I can or can't. Yeah. And there was a, a distinct shift where all of a sudden it was like the, the dark, you know, how sometimes some sunglasses, right? Mm. They're very dark. Yep. And they're only good in a very specific circumstance. Like you're staring in the sun, you're on a dune in the Sahara, and like those are the right you're welding, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> but every other time, it's like these are overkill, you know. Yeah. And it felt like taking those off. Oh wow! And looking at the situations around me, hmm. and my car would break down, and I'd go, "Oh, you got this. You wanted this to happen. You're hmm. in control." Hmm. All There's right, what do you got for me today? What does this mean? Like, how can I, you know? And it was like, how for was... a good se- couple of years, I would say, mm. it felt like it was that clear. Whenever anything would go wrong, it used to be, what am I doing wrong? Mm. How did how were my sins catching up to me? Sure. And it transitioned to, oh, okay, I bet you got something in this, and mm. I'm looking forward to seeing what it is. Yeah. And just a complete shift there in a trust, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's been, it's been a while, <laughs> 20 years. <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, since that moment. And it's, it's not that clear anymore. Like, mm. I still, I, I put some glasses back on. Really? I would say they're not as dark. Mm. But, and, and, but, but because of that time, mm-hmm. the proof was given to me. And so Mm. now, even though I don't feel it like I felt it then, Mm. like it would just be this profound feeling of like, cool, like Mm -hmm. what are we going to do here? Mm. Like God, you know, like let's see what he's got planned. Mm. I was given the gift of the the truth, the proof. And so now I carry that with me and I still Mm. know that's true. The feelings don't always come for free. Hmm. It's like, I know there's something to this. I know he's in control. It's interesting you, know? you use those words interchangeably. I feel this and I know. Well, they're not interchangeable. interchangeable. Well, that's that's yeah. the interesting part yeah. of it, is how much of it is something we can tend to think. Mm-hmm. This is another podcast in itself. Yeah. The difference between our <laughs> thinking and our feeling and yeah. how the two tend to interact, positively yeah. or negatively. Yeah. Yeah. Because what I can, when I think, I think our tendency is to say, when I feel God, right, he's close. Right. But if I don't feel God in this moment, I've sinned and he's far away. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Yep. 
And I, and so when you used it, it just clicked in my ha head when you were talking about the feeling and then what we know, Yeah, I think that's, that's an, imp that's another podcast. Yeah. And that's be been a to... life journey effort for me to understand the difference and allow them to be different, separate, but yeah. equal. And it, and but, I, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's important mm -hmm. though when we recognize how power comes into play. Mm -hmm. What I think about power, how I feel when I may mm. feel powerless, you know, I think that's a that's a that's another topic for another time. So yeah. <laughs> and I and I while you were sharing, I did think self righteous was the word that I was mm. looking for. Yeah. Before. But still I just uh appreciate you sharing that perspective of how the glasses have come off. Mm -hmm. and that you know they came but now they're back on to a certain <laughs> degree in that process and uh yeah i didn't mean to completely uh derail that with the thinking and the feeling but i think i think it's important to recognize how much power is available through christ even if i'm not necessarily feeling it mm -hmm. in yes. the moment yeah yeah i guess that's kind of what i was saying too about just the proof was given to me. Yes. And so now I can hold on to that as truth, as something I know. The feelings mm. have faded. They're not as free, mm. freely tr given to me, right? Like, oh, I just trust. It's like, mm. I know that I can trust. I don't feel it. It feels like mm -hmm. this is, like you're doing the wrong thing, God, you know? Yeah. But I know the truth. And mm. I was, yeah, so... And I think that, yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, we we should talk about feelings versus, you know, thinking at some point because that, I mean, that's something you we, you challenged me on when we first <laughs> met. I would say, I feel like this, and you say, Do you feel that or do you think that? Yeah. Right? Like, yeah, that, that oh yeah, like, yeah. yeah. That's kind of like my like I say, right? Yeah, it, pro <laughs> it probably was. It probably was. Uh, I but, feel yeah. like I don't say that as often now, so. Yeah. <laughs> you can see you're you're missing the little uh the the eye twitch that Mark's giving yeah. you. <laughs> the twinkle in the eye as uh Justin said when he referring to his kids before. Yeah, but yeah. so yeah. Any closing thoughts? Nope. That's uh, fair enough. <laughs> well this is how we see it. <laughs> Hey, thank you for listening to our podcast. If you like how I see it, please do all the things that podcasts tell you to do. Subscribe, rate, review, follow us, uh, and or talk nicely about us on social media. If you want to reach out, the email is us at howiseeit.click. Yep, I said dot click, as in dot C-L-I-C-K. Please tell your friends about this show, and we'll see you on the next one.